Hey there, Sugar Snaps. I have five different Easter egg decorating techniques for you to try. I wanna share some of the outcomes with you now. Uh, be sure to keep an eye out for each of the videos on how to do these techniques and check out later in the video how I turn these into um, Easter egg ornaments for a spring decor tree. So let's get into the different techniques now. Starting with some natural dyes. This will be at the basis for many of the videos. So um, checking this one out will help you get started in some of the others. So I'll show you how to use natural dyes, creating a dye bath from a natural material. Most of them are kitchen scraps, including beets, purple cabbage, blueberries, coffee, turmeric, red onion skins, yellow onion skins, and hibiscus petals or hibiscus tea. And these all create an, a not super traditional Easter egg palette, uh, but it's fun to see the colors that come out and do something that something that's a little more muted and may fit your home decor more naturally. Next up is bundle dyeing. Bundle dyeing is where you take a piece of cheesecloth, you sprinkle some sort of dye material onto the cheesecloth and then roll the egg up into that uh, material and allow steam to transfer the pigment from the dye material to the egg. And here I have several examples of that, um, the outcome of bundle dyeing and you can see I achieved a lot of different color variations um, from different materials. And um, in that video, I go over using cochineal, matter, red onion skin, and several other materials. So be sure to check that one out. Next up is batiking. So using wax, I use beeswax as a relief. You apply that to the egg and then put it into the natural dye to dye. And then once the egg has been um, dyed, you can remove the wax portions and see the natural color of the egg come through. So creating a pattern on the surface of the egg like these eggs here. The next one I wanna share is silk tie dyeing. So that is using a silk tie to um, transfer pattern onto the egg using the same steam technique as in the bundle dyeing. And finally, painting your eggs using a drill and you get nice stripes with this technique. I have several different examples of eggs decorated in this technique. This is a great technique to do with kids because you'll be working with a small amount of paint. There will be uh, less mess and your outcome will be really cute and fun and they'll enjoy the process. So let's get into how to make Easter egg ornaments out of these eggs and decorate an Easter egg tree. And be sure to keep an eye out for each of these videos and like this video because it helps me create more and better videos. Let's go into the Easter egg ornament now. So you've created a lot of decorated eggs. Now you have lots of eggs and no way to display them. So I want to show you how to turn this into an ornament that you can put on a spring egg tree for springtime decoration for Easter or um, other times of the year. So um, I have some jute twine here. I'm going to use that as the hanger. You can use cording or ribbon as well, um, something that will go through the bottom and up through the top and that you can create a hanger from a width that will work for your um, ornament hanging device. I have two different colors. These are both metallic um, Sculpey clays. Sculpey clay is a um, baking clay, so you form something out of it and then bake it in the oven. Um, so I have a gold and a silver here. I'm going to create little beads to um, put on either ends of the eggs to hold the twine onto the egg. Um, you also want a darning needle. This darning needle is the length of the egg, so I'll be able to put it through one hole and out the other without losing the needle. Um, and also a baking dish. This is just my little um, polymer clay baking dish, but you can put it on a normal size baking dish as well. So when working with polymer clays, um, Sculpey clay, 
Fimo, Primo, any of those kinds of clays, you're going to want to warm it up before you use it. So roll it in your hands and um, mix it a little bit. The ingredients sometimes separate in the package or between uses. And so you want to mix them up um, well before using them. Also probably remove any rings you have or else you'll have clay stuck in them. So roll it between your hands. I'm just creating a quick snake and then kind of twisting it a little bit and then folding it in half a few times and then making a snake again um, just to warm it up. And I'll start out with gold because I think I want to do gold with this egg. And then I'll do some silver ones as well for some other eggs. So once your clay is warmed up, you can feel that it's warm and it's easy, it's malleable, easy to work with. Um, go ahead and roll it into a ball. So you squish it in your hand and then roll it between your palms to create a ball. And you want to roll it until you can't see any seams in the clay. So until you have a nice smooth ball. Okay, and then I'm going to put it on the surface of my works or, or on my, then I'm going to put it on my table and roll it into a snake. And I'm making beads that will cover up the holes on my eggs. So they need to be bigger than an eighth of an inch, but probably smaller than say three eighths of an inch because you don't want it to be too big when mounted on either end of the egg. So I'm gonna roll this clay out to about, uh, about a quarter inch in diameter. Like so. And then you can use a knife or the needle or um, just your fingers to pinch off a about a half an inch length from your snake and then roll that in your fingers to create another ball. So there I have a small ball. And I'll take, I'll use my darning needle to make the hole in the bead. And I'll use this because um, this is the size I'll need to be able to fit through to create the ornament. So using the object that you're going to be threading your um, twine or ribbon through is helpful. Um, okay, so find the center of your ball and gently rotate the needle through. And I'm not pushing too hard, I'm just holding the other end against my finger to create that hole. And then rotating the needle while I hold the ball between my fingers to get the hole all the way through. And then pull that out and rotate it to go the other direction and put the hole through the other direction. And then rotate the bead on the needle to kind of extend the hole just a little bit. Okay, and then pull the needle out. And you'll have one end that kind of tapers up. You want to pat that down and then flatten the bead just a little bit, rotating it between your fingers. And then again, check your hole size, going from both sides, and then carefully press down those edges. So there is a bead for one end, and it'll mount like so, and we'll make a bead for the other end. But I'm going to extend this hole because um, I'm looking at my twine and I'll need the twine to fit through the hole in the bead as well as the hole in the egg. So I'm gonna just rotate the bead a little bit on the needle until the hole extends out a bit. And there I have a hole bigger than my needle. So I'll be able to thread it through. And then stick that bead on your baking tray. and do the same for the other side. 
cutting off about a half an inch length, creating a ball. And I'm using the side of my hand to roll it in my palm to create that ball. Okay, and then flatten it a little bit then create your hole. And through the other side. And flatten it a little bit to just to close off those ends so that there's no rough edges sticking out. Then stick your needle through and extend the hole size. Place that one on your baking dish as well. So you'll make two beads for each of the eggs that you are um, working with, and you can choose any color of clay that you want um, to correspond with the eggs that you have. You can use pastels or metallics like I am, or um, whatever whatever colors Sculpey Fimo or Primo come in. So. Um, Go ahead and choose whichever color work for yours best and um, these beads once you have all your beads made you'll put them in the oven according to the package instructions typically that's at 275 degrees fahrenheit um, for 15 minutes per quarter inch and because these beads are so small that would be um, 15 minutes exactly so uh, go ahead finish your beads bake them and Come back and we'll uh, work on putting them on the egg and creating the ornament. When your beads have baked and they have cooled enough to be able to handle or you have be other beads to use, you're ready to create your egg ornament. So um, what you're going to do is thread your needle with the cord, ribbon, twine, whatever you chose to use. Um, and just put enough through so that you can uh, grip the needle and you have a good grip on the jute as well. So for this egg, I'm going to do gold beads. So I'm going to put one bead on, thread that through, and then thread on my egg. And it can be tricky to find the hole and then gently pull through. You don't wanna crack the egg after you've put so much effort into it. So pull gently through so that the twine going through doesn't um, cause damage. It might be thicker than the hole you have, so just gently ease it through. Okay, so you have a bead, an egg, and put on another bead. Okay, and then remove your needle from the twine. So now what you're going to do is create the loop that the egg will hang from. And I like to have about an inch and a half to two inches of a loop here. So create that, fold it over, and then wrapping around your finger, create a overhand knot. I think that's what that's called. <laughs> um, create a knot. So you've got a small little loop in the top and then the tail, you can clip off right, cut off right at the base of the knot. So it's just your little loop now. And then press the bead up so that it butts right against, butts up against that knot, and then slide your egg up and then the second bead. And then from the other end of your twine, create another knot, pulling the twine through and press this knot right up against that other bead. So you have a knot holding all of this center section in place and nice and snug against it itself so that when it hangs, it's just one unit. So then you can cut off the end of the twine, just leaving a tiny tail that's sticking out of that knot. And there's your ornament. 
And you can do this with all the eggs that you've decorated and decorate your spring or Easter decor tree with these little ornaments. Okay, so I've created an egg tree with a bunch of branches that I gathered from the yard and I've trimmed them down to break off any branches that are too thin to hold the eggs up or that um, were just too wild and needed to be um, trimmed down so that it's contained in my vase area. Um, and there's a couple more here I can see I'm going to trim down as well. Go ahead and look over your vase of branches and see if it's oriented the way you want it to be. Once you put the eggs onto the tree it's hard to move the branches around because the eggs are fragile and you don't want to crack them while you're trying to adjust things. So get the orientation the way you want it. Go ahead and step back and look at how it's set up. I like having um, kind of a taller branch coming up out of the center and then building out off of that to look similar to like a bush um, growing in a garden um, to get that symmetry and yet asymmetry because things in nature don't usually or aren't usually as or symmetrical so getting some asymmetry with um, at least a center point to build off of um, so i have my branches set up and trimmed and now i'm going to add my egg ornaments to this and i did all of these egg ornaments with um, ribbon you could also use jute like i showed in the um, ornament making section of the video um, and then go ahead and just start placing them on the branches and um, hanging them on the on your tree until you have all of them hung and I'm going to try to kind of balance out the warm with the cool color so the the oranges and the reds with kind of the um, grays and the blues so that it's visually appealing so Go ahead and hang all your ornaments on the tree and then um, once I'm done with that I'll show you what it looks like. And here's my finished egg tree. Here I have represented several of the different types of egg decorating techniques that I'll be showing you in videos to come. You can separate your colors so that they color coordinate. Um, you could use the, the grays and the browns um, separately. I have them all together as this kind of beautiful hodgepodge of different techniques and styles to show the different ways you can decorate Easter eggs using natural ingredients um, and recycled materials. This is a great piece to set on a side table or as a centerpiece of um, your dining room table. This one's a little large for a dining room table. Um, if you did something a little bit shorter, it'd be great as a centerpiece. Um, so I'll probably set this on my side table in my dining room as um, a spring decoration. This is a great um, way to to show off your naturally dyed Easter eggs and the Easter eggs that you create. To store your Easter eggs, I would suggest putting them in some sort of bin or um, plastic container with a layer of bubble wrap or foam or some something soft in the bottom and then a row of eggs in the base of the container and then another layer of bubble wrap or foam um, to top them off. And you could do multiple layers like that with a uh, layer of foam or bubble wrap in between or just one layer with the lid on it and then store it somewhere where they won't get um, moved around too much or uh, squashed. So um, I hope you enjoyed the process and I hope you enjoy creating your own decorated Easter eggs. Um, be sure to check out the videos as they come out and like this video because it helps me continue to make videos and share new skills with you. Thanks for watching and supporting my channel and I'll see you next time.